All right, everybody, for this next video, we're going to go ahead and make it so that uh, when our enemy ship spawns in, it will randomly decide to start firing back at the player. Right. So let's go ahead and select our enemy prefab. If you don't already have Visual Studio open, you can open it here, but let's open our enemy controller. Oh. All right. Much like we did with randomly spawning in enemies, we want our enemy ships to randomly fire at us. So you're going to find that a lot of the code for this is exactly the same. But because having to enter it in again will go ahead and really help it hit home for you guys, I'm not going to copy and paste it. We are going to type it all out. Now, if I want to go ahead and set it up so that every so often, a bullet is randomly fired. I need two timer variables. One that I will go ahead and count upwards worth from zero, and another one that will tell me what am I counting to. And then once I've reached that time and I say, hey, create a new whatever. Uh, what is that whatever I want to create? In this case, it's a bullet. And I, in Unity, will assign what bullet? All right. Now, in our start method, when we go ahead and first create enemy controller, so when an enemy comes into existence, we need to go ahead and instantly set its timer for the bullet firing to zero. Okay, start it at zero. And set the max timer bullet to a random number. Okay? And this is how often we want it to fire. Okay? Um, in testing, uh, I would say that having any given uh, enemy fire no more than once every five seconds, all the way up to something like once every 25 seconds, we'll go ahead and make for some nice variation um, in your game. Uh, putting the max time lower, such as 12, you're going to have a lot of ships, uh, enemy ships firing all at once, and it's going to make it very difficult for the player. All right, so I've set up all my beginning stuff for counting a timer. Let's go ahead and let's set this up. We're going to use a coroutine again, so that. Um, a coroutine will handle when we decide to randomly fire a new bullet. Okay? So we're going to say start coroutine, and we're going to give it a string telling us what the name is of the method that we want to start. Okay? Our coroutine method is going to be an I enumerator again, not enumerable, I enumerator. And as we already wrote, we're going to call it fire bullet. Uh, now the next step is exactly the same as the enemy manager with just the variable names changed. So this I'm going to copy this, go back to my enemy controller, and paste it. Now I need to go ahead and change things like timer to the new timer variable name I created. Set these up correctly. Values. And then I need to go ahead and do my spawn bullet method. Yeah. And just like before, that method doesn't exist yet. So let's go ahead and create it. Yeah. Now we're going to go ahead and use a vector 3 spawn point, just like we did with the enemies. Uh, however, for this, we want the enemy's bullets to originate from the exact same location as the enemy itself. Now here's where things get a little bit trickier. We want to go ahead and set the spawn point of the bullet for the enemy to look like it's firing from the front of the enemy. 
do we have to do it this way? No. But the purpose of this is to go ahead and show you how we can go ahead and set this up. Now, I know that the spawn point variable above has a Y value. This Y value is the current position of my sh enemy ship. So the XY will be the middle of the enemy ship sprite in your game. However, I want to go ahead and I want the Y value to be adjusted by the size of the bullet and the size of the ship. So that it fires the bullets from the front of the ships. So first of all, we need to go ahead and say we're going to take the bullet, get component, render, bounds.size.y divided by 2. Now this is going to go ahead and say, alright, take the bullet, take its height, and divide that by 2. Alright, so I already know that I need to use that additional half a distance to ensure that the bullet is pushed all the way past the front of the ship. Alright, I also want to go ahead get component render dot bounds dot size dot y divided by 2. Okay. Now what this is doing is saying, okay, now take the size of my enemy, get its y height, and divide by 2. And we're going to squish those together, and we're going to say the spawn point along the y-axis of the bullet is that much further down, both the enemy and the player. Right? So what this means is, normally if I were to fire a bullet, it's going to go ahead and from the center of the ship, put the center of the bullet, and move them downward. I'm saying, move me forward half the distance of the ship, half the height, Okay, so that would bring me from the middle to here, and then um, when the bullet is generated, if it's generated right here, half the bullet will still be behind the ship. The other half will be in front. So then I'm saying take half the height of the bullet and move it forward again. Therefore putting the center point right here, and the bullet will spawn right along here. Now, I've given my spawn point. Last but not least, I need to say game object dot instantiate bullet. So the bullet object that I've assigned to this script and transform dot rotation okay. because we created a spawn point uh, we don't have a rotation with that we only have uh, a vector 3 okay. so we have to go ahead and specify the bullet so the object we want to spawn in where we want to spawn it and its rotation for the enemies we want the rotation to be the same um, for them as it is for their bullet. So that's why we pass it in this way. Now if you go ahead and save the script, switch over to Unity, wait for some enemies to spawn in, Ah, I know what's going on. So, go ahead and click our prefab, click on the enemy, open the prefab, and then if you look in our enemy controller, our bullet has no game object assigned to it. Okay. So what we need to do next is go ahead and create an enemy bullet. So to do that, in the hierarchy, right click, 2D object, sprite, rename it bullet underscore enemy from our sprites menu, uh, folder expand the laser bolts and I'm just going to use the first image right there okay cool I then go ahead and say add component right now, let's go ahead and, oh, we'll go ahead and continue with this. Go ahead and do rigid body 2D, set its gravity to zero. 
go ahead and add a circle collider. For now, we're just going to go ahead and uh, leave that alone. You'll see why. And then go ahead and choose your prefabs folder. Take bullet enemy, drag it down here, and give yourself a nice new bullet prefab for the enemy bullets. Open the prefab. Let's go ahead and edit the collider now. Zero it out. There we go. We now have a enemy bullet with a collider. Last thing we need to do is we need to take the bullet controller script. And um, we need to go ahead and duplicate this. Right? So let's go ahead and right click. Or rather than do it this way, let's just go ahead and we're going to right click down here. We're going to do create C sharp script. And we're going to call it bullet enemy controller. Okay. Go back here, we're going to go to our prefabs, select our bullet enemy again, then click scripts, prefab, bullet enemy controller, add it on. Great. Now open bullet enemy controller. Go to open bullet controller as well. Take everything that is inside the bullet controller class, okay? Copy it, and paste it in your enemy bullet controller. Now, the only thing we need to do here is that we only want to destroy the game object when it is below the bottom of the camera, and we only want it to be looking for player objects to interact with and destroy. Okay. Save that. Go back to Unity. Once it finishes uh, reloading the scripts, the speed for the bullet enemy Set it to negative one. And go ahead and run your game. Okay. We should be able to shoot enemies. Now we just need our enemies to shoot back at us. And if that's not working, it looks like the variable bullet of enemy controller has not been assigned. Now, so let's go ahead and go to our scene, or there, go for our prefabs, go to the enemy, open prefab, and if you look at the script, you'll see we still haven't assigned a bullet. So we want to take the bullet enemy and drag it over there. Now if we run our game, There we go. And they should be able to hit us. Okay. They're not able to. And they can hit each other, though. So that's a nice touch. But they can't destroy each other. All right. So that's all completely explainable. And we're going to go ahead and go over that in the next video.